Should the New York Knicks trade for Miles Turner? We're going to break that down on today's show. But first, I want all the real ones to give me your thoughts and opinions in the comment section right now. If you could only have one big man, who would you want it to be? Type MR for Mitchell Robinson or MT for Miles Turner. Yo, what up, Knicks fans? You are watching New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Marshall Green. I appreciate everybody for taking time out of their day to rock with us for a couple of minutes as we break down the idea of Leon Rose and the New York Knicks trading for, yes, a CAA client in Miles Turner. My point is this. If the Knicks want to be an elite offensive team, Miles Turner would be the perfect fit at the five spot for this offense. And I can already hear people in the comments section. But Marshall, the Knicks had the third best offensive rating in the NBA last year. It was on pace to be one of the best offenses in NBA history. And you are correct. The Knicks did have the third best offensive rating this past year. If you don't know what offensive rating is, I'll tell you. It's how many points you score per 100 possessions. The Sacramento Kings, they were number one at 119.4, followed by the Boston Celtics, 118. Then you see the Knicks right above the Philadelphia 76ers, and then the Denver Nuggets at 117. But there is, you got to go deeper than just the offensive rating, because I don't believe it tells the full story. And a reason that I believe the Knicks offensive rating got such a bump last year was because some of the little things. They were third in the NBA in offensive rebounds per game at 12.6. They dominated their opponents, not just on the defensive side of the glass, but also on the offensive side of the glass. More offensive rebounds equals more offensive possessions. Also, the Tom Thibodeau-led Knicks were excellent at getting to the free throw line. They were a team that liked to attack the basket, and they got rewarded by the whistle. 25.6 free throws per game, which was third in in the NBA. So you're third in offensive rebounds, third in free throw percentage, or third in free throws attempts per game, as well as offensive rating. But let's talk about efficiency. And that is where the Knicks were below middle of the pack. They just ranked 20th in field goal percentage at 47. Three point percentage, they came in at 19th in the NBA. At, on all two point shots, they came in at 18th in the NBA. They were 22nd in free throws, and they were also 28th in assists per game. And all of these stats don't revolve around Mitchell Robinson, but I will say this, the lack of floor spacing, and more often than not, playing four on five on offense, considering Mitchell Robinson is not really an offensive threat, except for throwing an alley-oop or him being in the dunker spot, can't score outside the paint, the Knicks' offense was clunky, and it was not really all that efficient. And that really showed to be true in the NBA playoffs. The Knicks shot 29.2% from downtown in the playoffs, which you guessed it, was worst amongst all 16 teams that ended up making the playoffs. What is one way the Knicks can improve that? By adding a stretch five to this offense. And I truly do believe that Miles Turner solves a lot of these problems for the Knicks. Let's talk about Turner and what the big man did for Indiana this past season. 18 points per game. A career high for Mr. Miles Turner, the former Texas Longhorn. Seven and a half rebounds per game. 2.3 blocks per game. He has led the NBA multiple times in blocks per night. He had 2.3 last year. 54.8% from the field. And also a career high. Four, uh, 37.3% from downtown on four three-pointers a night. So the dude is getting up a good number of threes per night, and he's knocking them down at one of the best percentages at the center spot. But he does more than just those stats on screen. I feel like he would be a good fit in this offense because of his ability to score outside of just the restricted area. 37% on catch-and-shoot threes last year for Turner. And when he was in the 8 to 16 feet range on the court, he knocked down 58.6% of his shots. And whatever NBA.com determines are mid-range jumpers, he shot 47.9%. That would help tremendously with the lack of spacing that the New York Knicks had last season. A stretch five not only would help this offense, it would help Jalen Brunson, Emmanuel Quickly, R.J. Barrett, and Julius Randle all be more efficient when attacking the basket. Because what's similar about all four of those players? They love to get downhill. They love to put pressure on the front 
of the rim, and they are all good drive and kick players. And if the offense is spacing the floor and the defense is being honest, it makes them pay much more when they have to help off of their man. And with a Jalen Brunson drive and kick, if you have Miles Turner wide open for three, he's going to knock it down at a 38% clip. I want to go to this tweet from Alex Adams. He talked to RJ Barrett, and RJ said this, this is the full tweet. RJ Barrett on why he has played so well for Team Canada this summer and how his game translated to FIBA, he said this, point, uh, the paint is wide open. He's playing with stretch fives in Can with Team Canada. The Knicks don't really have one. I'm hoping Isaiah Hartenstein, in his second year in this system, can at least develop somewhat of a reliable three-point shot. We saw in 2021 and 2022 with the Clippers, he could occasionally step out and hit that shot. Didn't do that much with the Knicks. Didn't shoot a lot of those threes with the Los Angeles Clippers. But can he be a guy that shoots one and a half, two threes a game and can knock it down to 34, 35% clip to keep defenses honest? I think that would help a lot. But it would also open the paint for a team like the Knicks that like to get downhill. Jalen Brunson Averaged 19.6 drives per game last year and only shot 50% on those drives. Why? Because the help defender is right there on the opposite block helping off of Mitchell Robinson. R.J. Barrett, we know, likes to get downhill. 12 and a half times a game, he drove to the cup. And he only converted at 47.4%. That's not ideal. Julius Randle, 9.3 drives per game. He finishes at just above 51%. And Emmanuel quickly somehow averaged... 8.9 and had the best efficiency. A reason I think that is to be true is because he plays with Isaiah Hartenstein more often than not when it comes to Mitchell Robinson. And when Hartenstein's in the game, at least because he's a playmaker, he can hover around the top of the key and it keeps defenses floor spacing a little bit more honest. I have more news and stats to get to in a second. But first, get hooked up with our awesome t-shirts that we have on sale right now. Rep Chat Sports, Rep Knicks Now, and show me that you're a real one. Go to chatsports.com slash real Knicks. This is the link. It's in the comments, and it's clickable. Go down there, click it, and get a T. So you might be saying at this point, all right, Marshall, I get it. Mitchell Robinson is not a good offensive player. He can't even touch what Miles Turner can do. So you might be saying, but Marsh, what about defense? Mitchell Robinson is a stud, and he is. I'm not trying to disrespect Mitchell Robinson. I think he is one of the most underrated centers in the NBA. He absolutely dominated the front line for the Cleveland Cavaliers. People were telling me Jared Allen was better. You watched the series, you saw who the best big man was. But how much worse would the Knicks' defense get? I'm not sure, because when you look at the career defensive rating for both players, they're both at 106. One area, though, that this team would take a huge step back in if they did trade for Miles Turner was just be being bullies in the paint and owning the offensive glass. Mitchell Robinson is the best offensive rebounder in the National Basketball Association. He averaged four and a half offensive rebounds this past year, whereas Miles Turner averaged just 1.4 offensive rebounds per game. Big difference here, and that would... I think affect a little bit of what the Knicks want to do on offense, but can you change out maybe three offensive rebounds for more floor spacing and better quality shot looks for Brunson and Barrett and Randall and quickly? I think those things would even out. My final take on this subject. I'm not sure that you can win an NBA Finals in 2023 and beyond if your center cannot contribute anything offensively except for being an alley-oop threat or a guy that can catch a weak side pass from the block and dunk it from the dunker spot. Look at Nikola Jokic. Maybe we're entering a new stage of the NBA. I'm not asking for the Knicks to get a Nikola Jokic. But when a defense has to account for all five players on the opposing team to be a threat to score the basketball at all times, it keeps you more honest. And you have to be a different type of team. And you have to come up with a different defensive game plan. We saw in the Heat series against the Heat, Eric Spolstra was able to take advantage of the lack of offense that the Knicks had at that five spot. They could jam the paint, they could help off him, and double anybody that drove the basketball. Are the Knicks better if they trade for Miles Turner? I believe so. Do I think it's going to happen? Probably not at this point, but I love talking about it on today's show. And you guys have been asking me if the Knicks should trade for a stretch five, so I shared my thoughts today. If you want to talk more New York Knicks hoops, hit me up on Twitter, at Marshall Green underscore.